This will be fun. Uh, let me just get my global hotkeys on live split. Should be ready to start in a minute or so. Once I turn up the volume, so that you can hear this glorious game. Glorious. Yeah, that this is a meme game. Uh, so, timing starts when I hit new game and ends when uh, the uh, credits end and the uh, screen says whatever. Not really credits, but when it gets to the uh, you win the screen. Congratulations. Why? Because uh, no one else runs this, to my knowledge, and I'm deciding that that's when time will start slash end. Uh, so, timing, I guess, in 3, 2, 1, go. And I, I hit the wrong button to start. Good. 3, 2, 1, go. And what, what is the correct button here? Is it A? 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, there we go. Now my movement isn't entirely practiced, however, shouldn't be too bad in my opinion. I hope. Hopefully I don't confuse the real length of the pass with this. We don't need the bottle to beat the game. It's not important, so we don't get it. And there is no lamp in this game, so yeah. Hey look, it's the music that literally everyone hates. Enemy RNG is primarily the uh, RNG of the entire run bosses and enemy movement patterns to get through them as fast as possible. We have a few, uh, just movement tricks, such as to avoid certain screen transitions, which are extremely slow. But for the most part, it's a pretty simple game. I don't know why I said we, because th there is no we, there's only I. I am the one true speedrunner! We don't need the boomerang, so we don't go to the right there. Now here you don't really need to mash, you can just hold one of the direction keys on your D-pad. And this game is extremely loud, and I need to turn it down sometime. <clears throat> I don't know how I'm going to manage that. Here we're going to the left instead of the right, simply because of the right has uh, more screen transitions, which are really slow. Okay, I turned it down a little. Here you just have to uh, touch both of these statues, and now we have to talk to you. Now in order to uh, enter Eastern Palace, we need to talk to two NPCs. First, we need to talk to the village elder in the village. He 
he's just over here. This guy. And talking to him allows us to talk to Sahasrila, and talking to Sahasrila allows us to uh, enter Eastern. Like I said, dodging enemies is the main uh, movement pattern, like technique in the game. Now you can go through enemies, like, well you can't, but they can walk through you, and so uh, that can be faster depending on the situation, as opposed to going around them. So now we talk to Saharsarla, and that will allow us to enter Eastern. Here's an instance where we're just going to go through the enemy. I mean, we do have a sword, but right now it takes five hits in order to kill something. And that's quite slow. Now, we are going to be getting both uh, sword upgrades in this, simply because uh, the level 3 sword versus the level 1 makes bosses go considerably faster. Yeah, for the most part, we're just going to tank as much, take or, tank our damage and try not to get hit. That's an instance where I got caught. The enemies couldn't pass through each other, so I had to kill it. Just gonna pass through that enemy. Now here we're going to have to kill enemies. Gotta kill both of these. It's really the only situation where enemies are required to be killed. Couldn't open the thing. Okay, come on. Now here we're gonna pick up the bow. The bow is a required item. It also speeds up the armor spite, so even if it wasn't required, we would still get it. Because Armos takes double damage from arrows. So that's uh, 20 damage as opposed to 10 damage. Plus we can hit slightly faster. Now we just need to hit a lot with the sword. They have 60 HP, I believe. So yeah, we just stand here and spam. Now, uh, swords uh, spins uh, use magic in this game, which is pretty uh, dumb, and they're also pretty pointless, since uh, if enemies are on top of you, you can take damage, but you can't hit them with your sword, since the sword hits in front of you, so... You're just standing there, spinning, taking damage, and using all your magic. 
magic in this game is pretty pointless. There are essentially no instances where the, it's actually useful. A lot of things in this game are pretty pointless, so uh, we're not going to be getting a lot of items that you'd normally get in the, the actual A Link to the Past game. Okay, two of them are dead. One, uh, there's only one left. It'll only take five hits, and then it'll die, regardless of how much HP it had. One, two, three, four, five, and it's dead. Now we just have to backtrack out of the dungeon, because, uh, the game is too cheap to let us teleport out. Now we're going to get the boots from Sahasrala. These are, uh... A, they're a required item, and B, they uh, also considerably can speed up our movement, which is very nice. So we go talk to Sahasrala again. And now we have the boots. Now, they aren't really useful in short straightaways. They're only useful in long paths. But those do happen occasionally, and they are required in order to get the book. Now we're just gonna go in here real quick to heal ourselves. That's how we're gonna be healing our damage from three fairy fountains. Now here we're actually going to use the boots. They speed up our movement a little. It also is dependent on lag and a few other factors that aren't really clear. It's just like screen transition, etc. How fast they go. Like in desert they go really quickly, but here they, uh, in certain places like in the overworld, they can go really slowly. And on conveyor belts, ugh. So there we have to talk to Agna. He'll tell us about the book we need. We need to talk to him in order to uh, actually, uh, in order to actually uh, get the book from the library. And uh, hi, Civil Yoshi. Didn't notice you there. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, this game is pretty amazing. I'm actually gonna check my money real quick. None. Good. Okay, yeah, we're going to go do the maze race. This is just something I wanted to check, but... Yeah, we need f uh, 500 rupees to uh, get the uh, flippers from Zor, which are a required item to enter Ice Palace, and this maze race gives us, conveniently, exactly 500 rupees. So now we have 500 rupees, meaning we'll be able to uh, get the flippers after we, uh, after we um, do desert. So go here. The, you both the boots and talking to Agna are required in order to get the book.
Uh, there's a bit of backtracking in this game, but my current route, I believe, minimizes that as much as possible. Now we're gonna go equip the book. The book is in fact required in order to enter desert, otherwise uh, it'll just literally turn you away. You, it'll, uh, if you try to enter the, um, like, it'll just uh, push you downwards a tile automatically, so you have to actually get the boots to get the book. And that's basically the only use. You can get the two uh, medallions, but that's not required. You don't need to dash into the torch there, you can just pick it up. I should be dashing here. It's much faster to dash in Desert Palace. Unfortunately, sometimes it can eat your inputs and you won't be able to cancel the dash, but that's besides the point. Those top screens uh, transition really quickly. Just every screen in desert, really. I'm assuming it's because there's just not much lag in this dungeon. Yeah, much faster transitioning compared to, say, walking. Unfortunately, sometimes it can eat your inputs. Unfortunately, we need to go over here anyway to get the power gloves. These are required in order to uh, get to Death Mountain and to get the flippers. Now, for some reason, we come out there instead of down here, but that's okay. Hey look, it's that music that everyone hates. Except I don't honestly mind the music. We have to hit all four of these buttons. And that'll open up uh, Lamolus. Lamolus is a fight heavily influenced by RNG. Because he can do short hops and long hops. We want him to do as many long hops as possible, so that we can get long chains of hitting, hitting him like so. The best way to hit him is uh, stand in front of him and let him run into us. See short hops like so. This is what I said when I said this game has a lot of RNG with bosses. Okay, now we're going to go to Tower of Hera. First, we're going to go get our flippers and our level 2 sword. Swords really increase uh, how fast bosses go, and they're really useful. Now here we're going to take a quick heal, because we aren't going to be heal for another two dungeons. We're going to have to survive two boss fights without healing. Moldworm isn't threatening, but Egg can deal some damage to us. Don't ask me why those things are swimming through land. I'm not going to judge them. 
They can swim through land if they want to. And here we're gonna do some dashes. And now we have the flippers. Now we're gonna go in here. And now we have the level 2 sword. The sword will greatly increase how fast a uh, moldworm goes. And we're also going to get the level 3 sword also. Because the level 3 sword is much faster compared to uh, level 1. As you can see, uh, normal enemies take 3 hits instead of 5 to kill. With a level 3 sword, they'll take 2. Now, I believe there's a level 4 sword in this game, but I've yet to find it. Uh, I've also yet to find the, um... Bamos medallion. It's, po it's possible that they were just, uh... By the way, now we have the mirror. We're just gonna use that right away to, uh... Avoid having to kill this enemy that was blocking our path, since he would have respawned. And we have to use it anyway. In order to enter Hera. Now this is the Tower of Hera. Now here we're going to uh, do a very important glitch. As you can see, we have 47 keys. Uh, that's because, uh, that, you can infinitely pick up that key over and over and over again. So I did, and since keys are, uh, trans-dimensional between dungeons, I no longer have to get any small keys for the rest of the game. Which is much faster. common issue is that you'll often dash while picking up pots. However, we shouldn't have to pick up many more pots in the run. Now here's Moldorm. He's pretty non-threatening. You just stand here and slash. It takes a while, but it's safe. I believe he takes around 25 hits, maybe? With a level 2 sword? Maybe it's 30. He should be dead soon. Okay, he's died. 
now we're gonna go pick up the Moon Pearl, and not screen transition. That was actually slow to screen transition there. And the Moon Pearl is in fact required in order to do anything in the Dark World. Falling down every pit. Not good. Now, with all three uh, pendants in our collection, we can uh, do stuff. We can get the uh, Master Sword. Well, I, s I can't really say Master Sword since all sword upgrades are uh, additive. We can get the sword from this guy, because this guy just has a sword. And he'll only give it to us if we have all three pendants. Because that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, these birds are very dangerous. Very dangerous. In fact, I'm gonna need to heal before Aga. Fortunately, there's a fairy fountain right here. The sound effects are pretty good. Now, before we can uh, talk to Aga, first we have to go back and talk to the priest again. Now that we've got all three pendants, Zelda is kidnapped, so we have to go learn that. That's the last NPC we have to talk to for the rest of the run. And, I, okay, there we go. Yeah, it, it can definitely eat your inputs when you're dashing to, to cancel. Aika Tower is a pretty simple dungeon. It's got like four screens. One, two, three, four. Hey, look, we're done. Pretty good dungeon, right? Okay, Aga is a very much RNG-dependent boss. He'll always depend in a cr uh, appear in, in a direction directly cr like sideways or vertical from you. And you just have to hope that you can get there fast enough. Sometimes he teleports quickly, sometimes it's slow. It's all RNG. That's a good hitbox you have there, Aga. Yeah, you can't really hit him when he's down. Okay, and Egg is dead. Okay, now we're gonna go to the Palace of Darkness. If you know the original game pretty well, you're probably wondering where I'm going. Uh, that's because the Palace of Darkness is actually at the Mire location, and doesn't require any medallions because reasons. I, I told you, this game is good. Now, we could do Swamp right now, but we're gonna do Pod because that's what my splits say to do. We're gonna do Swamp right after anyway. Now, we're gonna take a heal, because we need it. 
Helmosaur can deal quite a lot of damage if you're not careful. Now we will be getting the hammer from this dungeon, and for one reason only, and that is that King Helmosaur can only be damaged by the hammer, and that's it. That is literally the only reason we need the hammer. Now we can't fall down on our right there because uh, that ground is actually uh, solid. You, it's not a hole. Uh, not a hole because good game design. Here we just have to dodge the uh, jellyfish. Now here's the magical bridge of magicalness. It appears and it disappears because reasons. Yay, we have the hammer. We're gonna use it once and that's it in the entire run. You may be wondering, don't you need to enter uh, Turtle Rock? Well, um, sorry to disappoint, but there is no Turtle Rock in this uh, in this particular game. I guess they just like it, they had all of East Death Mountain. It just looks to me like they ran out of time or space or something and didn't put it in, which is a little disappointing. And this is the boss of mashing, again. You may be wondering how good of a weapon the hammer is on normal enemies. Well, all weapons uh, do the same amount of damage as your current sword upgrade, with very few exceptions. The exceptions being uh, arrows do extra damage on on um, the Armos Knights, and the Fire Rod might do extra damage to uh, Coldster. I don't know. I haven't checked. That's split. Bit of a late split, but whatever. Now here we're going to heal before Argus because that's basically just the theme of this game: heal after every boss. Now, Swamp is a Swamp is an interesting dungeon. We get the hook shot in this dungeon, which is actually required for uh, three different dungeons. Required for this dungeon, for Ice, and for uh, Mire. Now here we can uh, skip getting a lot of small keys. We also did that in Pod because we got a lot of keys from Hera, and that speeds uh speeds us up considerably. Now, this screen transition in that room is extremely slow. We want to avoid it like the plague. And I'm going in the wrong, all the wrong places. So now we got the big key, we can go get the hook shot. Now here we're gonna go up up and to the right. It's a little bit of a longer rock walk, but this screen transition is extremely slow. Now we'll go equip our hook shot. And here's Argus. Argus is actually a bit of an involved boss. It's not just stand in one place and slash, you have to actually move. You can also deal some damage.
As you can see, that screen transition was very slow. I'm going in the wrong room. What am I doing? No! My PB! Here we're gonna try and do a uh, Mothula without uh, healing, because Mothula isn't that threatening. And I forgot to split. Nice. Just skip that split. Now, norm you're supposed to have the Titans mitts in order to enter this dungeon, but you only really need the Titans to enter from one location, so we can just get to that location by following through this hole, because Skull is the dungeon about uh, warping time and space, apparently. There's a enemy there. That's quite annoying. Anyway, we drop down this hole and we can get the uh, fire rod. This actually is a required item for the ice palace because cold stair will not spawn. You can go to uh, the boss room, but cold stair will not be there unless you have the fire rod. Having infinite keys allows us to skip long keys like that one there. It's uh, very useful. Mothula is a pretty easy boss fight. I mean, he can damage you, but he also dies pretty quickly. Really good Mothula RNG. Should be using the boots more, but oh well. Here we're actually going to use the mirror because we need to use the mirror. We can't actually leave this area without using the mirror. And we're going to head up to Mire, which is actually located where uh, the Tower of Hera is, just in Dark World. And I forgot to split again. Okay, let's not die. Now, Misery Mire. It's a... Uh... Good job. 
it's a pretty simple dungeon. We don't actually need to get the uh, item in this dungeon because although the Cane of Samaria is in this game, it's not located in this dungeon. The big chest has a single arrow, which I find quite funny. This dungeon also warps time and space a little. It's weird. Now here we want to stay off the conveyor belts as much as possible because they slow down your movement considerably. Should be dashing here. You can also speed up your movement dramatically. Now, Vitrios is essentially just a slightly harder, um, a slightly harder Argus. It can do more damage because it's got more projectiles, etc. But it's pretty much the same thing. Just with projectile. Just backtrack out of this dungeon. Now, fun fact, the hookshot will actually automatically use itself in certain situations, like right there. If you use it once, it'll, uh, if you press forward in a hookshot spot, it'll use itself again automatically for the rest of the game, pretty much. Now, we're actually not going to heal before we do co ice, because Cold Stair is the easiest boss in the game. Which is, uh... Quite surprising compared to uh, the real Link to the Past, in which Cold Stare is quite difficult. Cold Stare dies in like 25 hits with a level 3 sword. Like 21 of those, he won't even be able to attack us. Anyway, like I said, we wrote this like this because we need to get the Fire Rod in order to uh, actually be able to kill. Uh, Cold stare. We don't actually have to use it on him, we just have to have it in our inventory for him to spawn. If we didn't, we would just go from Swamp to Ice to Thieves Town, which is located at Vanilla Pod. Now these uh, warps in the water don't actually work. Ice Palace is a pretty straightforward dungeon. Kind of. Uh, these spikes on the sides actually do damage. So don't, don't run into them. Now get ready for Ice Palace Bomb Jump. Oh wait, there's nothing to jump. Yeah. Good. I wanted to throw the pop, but it dashed instead, because dash and throw are the same button. Now, these holes take us to different places. I'll elaborate further. This left hole is the one we want to go down. That hole doesn't actually lead down to the basement, despite what you might think. It's actually a myth. These pots uh, are pain because they will cause you to dash and shake the screen. Now here's why we need the hook shot for the big key. Use the hook shot here also. And here's the big key. 
Now, we have to actually walk over the spikes, and if you'll notice, uh, spikes in this game are vampires. They will drain all of your magic. All of it. It's pretty dumb. Now, here we're just gonna take the blue mail, simply because, uh, it's right there, so it's fast, and B, blind is actually a pretty dangerous fight. Blind can easily not, uh, play, play along. So now we go here, push the block. We can't actually fall with the block. That pit will damage us. We have to go down here. We do that. And we teleport into the blind fight instead of... Yeah, okay, I guess blind can damage you, but the point is he's... Er, Colt's here. He stays still for the majority of the fight. And he died. Pretty painlessly. And now we have to backtrack all the way over here. Pick up these pots again. Now, fun fact, even though this pit is actually in the same room as the other pit, it leads up a floor. Don't ask me how it works, but it just leads up. Now we're going to go to Thieves Town, the last dungeon of this game. But first, we're going to need a much, take a much needed heal. Because we're quite low. Uh, that chest there, actually, is the one that has Samaria. And it actually just shoots the projectile, a laser beam. Uh, this side area has the light and dark world palettes swapped, actually. If I go down, I could get the ice rod, actually, but it's pretty pointless. Now, I don't like Thieves Town, because this dungeon is a bit confusing. And it's got really slow scrolling. Whatever you do, do not go upstairs and go through a screen transition at the same time, because otherwise the screen transition will go about twice as slowly. Now, the item in this dungeon is the Titan's Mitts, but we don't need those at all, so we're just going to skip them. We don't need to pick up the key out of the pot. Uh, yeah, conveyor belts don't actually push you. They just slow your movement, or speed it up. When moving in that direction. So I can move sideways all I want. Now here it's important to actually stop moving and start again, because otherwise you'll keep moving with the same speed as the conveyor belt. It'll carry to off the conveyor belt. Now here we just skip that hallway, apparently. Now you have to actually hit that switch before you can uh, take blind with you, which is just a uh, recolored Zelda, but that's besides the point. Now I'd go up to get the big key and down to uh, get the uh, item if I needed it, but I don't, so... Yeah, blind is a pain, because blind likes to do this in which they are unhittable. If I go down to the bottom, uh, it will actually reset her RNG. However, usually she just collapses before I can get close to her. Yeah, Blind is without a doubt the worst boss in the game. Yeah, like, yeah, this is this is why I got the blue mail. She does a lot of damage. And 
And unfortunately, her hitbox is so large that she has to run into EU for you to be able to hit her, pretty much. Okay, she died, thankfully. Now we just have G Tower. Which is actually just a boss fight with Ganon himself. And it's quite easy. We aren't actually going to heal even. Because, uh... When you, uh, kill Ganon... Or when you enter the Ganon fight, you get a full heal and you get an arrow... Max arrows of 99. Which might not actually be the max, but it, it gives you 99 arrows. Because arrows are the only thing that actually hurts Ganon. And that's why we need, uh... The, um, bow. In fact, we can't actually enter the Ganon fight without the bow. The game won't let us. So time will be in about two minutes-ish. It's on the congratulations screen at, after you kill Ganon. Okay, let's not die on our way to Ganon. I'm gonna go equip my uh, bow. And boom, full heal. And boom, full arrows. Ganon works similarly to Aga, kind of, but he has a bit more variance in where he spawns. Just pump him full of arrows, and he died. Time is coming up. Soon as the congratulations screen. There, time. And I forgot to split for Thieves Town. Good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, one second thieves. Or again, in fight, whatever. 5047. Not bad. I guess. And I'm getting texted. Good. I'll take a quick five, three minute break and then I might do another run.